Here are three important lessons I wish I would have learned when I first got saved. These lessons could have saved me a ton of disappointment and regret in the future. What's up friends, Jeremiah here. And like a lot of you, when I first got saved, I was very passionate for the work of God. I was very zealous for his house. Like the Bible says, the zeal for your house has consumed me. Yeah, that was me. And so right after being saved, I went straight into preaching and teaching the word. And you might say, hey, that's good. But here's the thing, I didn't really understand the Bible yet. And so I taught some good things, but I also taught some things that I look back today and said, man, that was false. That was legalistic. That was not the gospel. But I was filled with so much zeal that I went ahead and did it anyway. So what I would do if I could start over is to not be in a hurry to preach the gospel. Even though I know we are called to preach the gospel, I would actually take the time to study and to understand some things, just the basics of Christianity before I went out to preach. If I had an opportunity to share with people, I would simply share my testimony and tell them how God had been good to me instead of trying to be so deep with the teachings and trying to break down complex doctrines that I as a new believer just didn't understand yet. And speaking of my testimony, here's a brief summary. I was brought up in a Christian home with Christian values but I didn't really get saved until I was 15 years old in high school. I don't remember the exact date, but in February of 2012, I finally put my faith and trust in Jesus for salvation. So I've been saved for about 11 years now. And another thing that I wish I would have done differently is to focus on the gift giver instead of the gift things. When I first got saved, I was thriving on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I was using that as a measurement to how much I was growing spiritually instead of basing it on my understanding of the word of God. And here's what I mean. Soon after getting saved, I realized that I could prophesy and see visions and I could teach and break down concepts in the Bible for people to understand. It's like whatever my understanding was of the scriptures, whether it was flawed, like I said in the first lesson, or correct, I could teach and explain it to people in a very simple way. And I acknowledged that it was the gift of God. I acknowledged that it wasn't my own ability, but I used those things as a gauge of my spiritual growth when I should have been using my walk with Christ, my understanding of the scriptures, my daily fellowship with God as my gauge. So what I would do differently is submit my gift to God and say, God, I can see what you're doing in me. I can see the manifestations of the gifts of the spirit, but I want to know you. I want to focus on you. And whenever you're ready to use me, I will submit to you. But for now, I just want to get to know you. I wish that would have been my main focus. Lesson number three, as a new believer, I fell into this trap of believing every single thing that was said by anyone that I respected, any man of God that I held in high regard, I would just absorb everything that they said without checking it with the scriptures. And I realized that this is a huge trap that a lot of Christians fall into. Whether it's people around us that we respect or someone that we see on TV or on YouTube, we take whatever they say like, oh, this person can never be wrong, but that's not true. Now what I would do differently is I would check every single thing. And I mean everything with the word of God. Just like the Berians did with Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, I would make sure that whatever someone is saying, I don't just absorb all of it, but I check the scriptures. Anyone can be wrong on any topic. So instead of putting people on a pedestal where they can never say anything wrong, just keep in mind that they're also human. They're also learning. They're also getting to know God just like you and study for yourself. Let me know in the comments which of these situations resonated the most with you. And if you notice, really, all these situations taught me the same lesson. Know God and know his word for yourself. Don't depend on anyone else or your giftings or your zeal. Just get to know the word, dive into it, study it for yourself, read it for yourself, and you'll be far better along than I was. So if you'd like to know my three easy and effective tips for reading the Bible, check out this video right here, and I'll see you next time. God bless you.